Excellent drive to open up this second half. LaMike James fumbled the football, but Miami recovered on the kickoff return. Tannehill in trouble. Tannehill. Oh, he loses the football. Scooped up. Still free. Bouncing around like a pinball. Washington's got it. And then things went sour. Yeah, Preston Smith, the rookie out of Mississippi State, the second round pick, pops the ball loose, and then here's your pinball game, Ian. Looked like the uh, Dolphins had a shot at it. Looked like the Redskins had a shot at it. Bottom of the pile is the guy that started it all. Preston Smith. Just get the ball out of the it up at the 20 he loses it again ball is loose and the texans fall on it for a touchback back down at the one what a wild play here in oakland jones had two fumbles on the same play one catch two fumbles another look reveals the extemporaneous quality of this play Haberlack was supposed to pass the ball back to Morrow, but Jethro Pugh, number 75, disrupted the pattern. Haberlack threw instead for John Mackey, but Ed Hinton caught it. When Cornell Green swiped the ball from Hinton's hands, neither team could recover it. is picked off. Finnegan has it. It was deflected off of Brandon Marshall and Finnegan still on his feet getting to midfield and finally in the Chicago territory and he lost the ball and a fumble and here's Hester and Hester tackled from behind by Fletcher and time running out and the clock stops with three seconds to go. So an interception by Finnegan. He fumbles. Hester picks it up. <laughs> and a wild finish to this first quarter. We have two and a half minutes to play here in the first half. High snow! Inside the five. Going back to cover it is Allen. Allen lost the football, and it's out of the end zone. What was Ryan Allen trying to do? That snap from Overton, and not even anywhere in the realm. Oh, he tried to lateral it. I, I don't know if he was attempting a forward pass to Tavon uh, Wilson. It's, it didn't work. In 1958, future Cowboy coach Tom Landry finally brings him forward to a matching Steelers challenge. and leans into it. Does he have enough? No good! What a finish! It hit the post! Rejected by the crossbar. 
I gotta believe he feels the same way about this one. Drilled it right down the middle, a little push into the wind. Watch it hit the bar and then reject it oh. as it bounced back through and onto the other side. This one ricocheted off the left crossbar, went through and watch it hits the bottom post and knocks it back toward into the field of play. There's a question whether the ball went past the crossbar and came back. We will take a look at this play. Well then, that's exactly what happened. If we can read it one more time, we're going to tell you, see it hit that crossbar. Now watch as it comes. See, right now it's through the goal post. The ball came to rest on the other side of the goal post. See, we, we're blowing it up now. Watch it. See, that's the back side of the goal post there. See, once it hits this, it's already through the uprights. After a discussion of the field, the end zone that ball came darting out of there watch Polamalu what did he do here oh yeah oh, yeah he did oh yeah what a heads up play well that's illegal if the Cardinals can hold at the point of attack Matthews over the top bubble the ball and recovered by the Cardinals Rashad Johnson and he pitches into the ball's loose and the Chargers get a touchdown John Phillips on a midair recovers it and runs it into the end zone. What were the Cardinals doing? Whenever they seemed to be so close, they wound up so very far away. But as sometimes happens in one-sided games, one fluke play gave the Colts a chance to get back in it. Number 11, Greg Landry, was the fourth Colt to handle the ball on this aborted field goal attempt. And instead of three points, Baltimore came away with a touchdown. Oh, here's the other talk to Tom Moore that an Indianapolis got best of the game. They're going to push the play here. And Evans, Sanchez gets hit. The ball is loose, and it's alive. And then going into the end zone is Steve Gregory, who's had an interception, two fumble recoveries, oh, and a my. touchdown. Running with it is George Wilson. Inside the 20, inside the 15, inside the 10, headed towards the end zone. Wilson gets into the end zone. And let's see, do they mark him down? The officials do not signal touchdown. They will mark him down. There is no time left on the clock. The last backward pass was that fumble. Therefore, the runner had to recover it himself and did not. The half is over. Redskins bring four. Breeze, double pump, still can't find anybody. Retreats, retreats, throws it downfield into a crowd. And that is going to be intercepted. Coming up with it is Kareem Moore. Kareem Moore is going to have the ball taken away from him. And Meacham, Meacham stole the ball. Ten, five, touchdown Saints. My goodness. Robert Meacham finds a new way of getting into the end zone. 
stealing the ball from Kareem Moore, who had intercepted. We'll have one more play. Watch the front of your screen as the fan comes on the field to help out the Patriots. Davidson goes back to pass. walking off. He unsnaps his helmet. You see the officials going by? They were the only ones with him. Maybe a couple of Rams. All of a sudden, that's an NFL record. 103 yards for a punt return for a touchdown. Ware made that big play, and the next thing you know, Dallas has the ball. And the pass out here to Glenn. And Glenn's going to lose the ball, but is it going to be saved before it goes out of bounds? And they're going to say yes for a touchdown. Kelly Jennings knocked the ball loose. Michael Bowler winds up with it. And before anything is over and done with here, we'll take a look at a million angles. And Parcells, of course, wants to see what he's going to challenge and when he's going to challenge it. But clearly, the officials all get together. All right, they're still looking at this. Here's what I think is going to happen. But I think this is going to wind up as a safety. A lot of things to look at. First things first. Is it a catch? Okay. So you've got Romo throwing. Glenn makes the catch. Stumbles. He's still not touched. So the ball is still alive. Jennings then creates the fumble. Now the ball is alive. Now what's going to happen here is that Peterson is going to come in. Peterson is inbound. Tupo's going to go over Peterson. But here's why this play is going to get overturned. It's very simple. Right there... A Tupo as he is able to get the ball back into the end zone as his foot on the line. So it's alive until that point, but the Tupo has his foot on the line. They will overturn this, is what my guess is going to be, and the end result is going to be a safe. Pressure coming. going on there are four fouls on the play that's why it took so long running into the kicker number 34 in the kick of the receiving team holding number 95 of the receiving team personal foul number 34 of the receiving team Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 57 on the kicking team. By rule, all those penalties offset, replay fourth down. <laughs> have, have you ever had four penalties on one play? Two of them were on Chase Reynolds of the Rams, and somehow it's done three. How do, how do three and one offset one another? And there's Chase Reynolds there at 34 running into. We, we don't have time to show all the other infractions, but as Jeff Triplett explained, 
we appreciate him discussing it by rule. They do offset even though three were called against the Rams. And one against Seattle. And four on the road this year. And a bad throw that's behind the line of scrimmage. And it's a live football. And the Cardinals can't get to it as it goes out of bounds. Miami maintains possession. Now sets up a third and forever. A loss of 21 yards. It'll be second down now.